Hello, everyone. Ah, there's my camera. So we are, you know, still waiting for a few more people to come in, but I think we'll get started. This is being recorded. Um, people are joining on Facebook Live as well. Uh, so, you know, hopefully we can coordinate how to how to reach everyone. Um, but yeah. Okay, let me share my screen. Cool. Is that working? I can see it. Cool. Okay, awesome. So, hi everyone. My name is Annalise. Um, I was part of the Junior Resident Fellows program just this past summer. Uh, I'm in 2023, and yeah, I'm joined by Grace here. Hi, I'm Grace Nis Nisai Huff. Uh, I was part of the program in 2022. I was going to say last year, but technically year before last. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's recent for both of us relatively. It's on the mind still. Um, yeah. And so today we're just going to be talking a little bit about our experiences in the program um, and some application tips too. Like also be leaving whatever questions you have, leave it in the chat, whether it's Facebook or on Zoom, and uh, we'll get to some questions at the end. Um, so yeah, let's see. Uh, uh, if you, there we go. Awesome. There's the next uh, slide. This is kind of the rundown of what we're going to be talking about today. And towards the end, we're going to uh, talk a little bit about our projects that we did during this program. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, first, let's talk about what exactly is the Center for My Studies. Uh, Annalise, you want, do you want to start off? Yeah, sure. So the Center for My Studies was created to promote research and teaching and public service in Cambodia and the, the surrounding region in various areas of study in the humanities and the arts, in the social sciences. Um, and CKS has definitely an emphasis on, you know, international scholarly exchange um, that's done in an effort to like promote a broader and deeper understanding of Cambodia. And yeah, they have several programs. Today we're talking about the junior resident uh, fellows program, but you know, they also have a language program and some other opportunities to check out if you're still, you know, figuring out what you're you're most interested in. Yeah. yeah. Um uh, our the this program in particular um is a collaboration between uh, Cambodia, the US, and France. Uh, and so if we move on, I believe the next slide, mm -hmm. we can there put those up. So uh, exactly as the slide says, it's a six week program. Uh, you'll have two weeks in Sim Reap, you have two weeks in Phnom Penh, and then back two weeks in Sim Reap, or at least that's how my program was run. Uh, and it's a collaboration of, there's a group of my students, there's a group of uh, US students, and there's a group of French students, and everybody gets a chance to essentially research whatever they want. <laughs> I mean, within reason, but we all we all pick a research program, work on it throughout the six weeks uh, in between the classes we take, and then we present it at the end. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a bit of study and like culminates in um, individual research projects that that can take all sorts of different forms. Um, We'll talk a little bit about them later or about our project specifically, um, but most people write like a research paper, um, which is especially useful if, you know, if you want to apply to grad school to sort of build that that body of work you have. Um, but yeah, but it's flexible. You can do different forms as well. And the the main CKS campus is in Siem Reap in Wat Nam Nak, which is a monastery. Um, which is really cool to be able to to participate in the sort of academic and cultural life of that space. Um, yeah, it's really cool. But yeah, applications 
for the 2024 summer program are open now. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about the application process later. But yeah. If you look at the chat right now, that is a link to uh, the information for the program, as well as the link to like the application uh, instructions. So make sure you click on that and save that link. And yeah. yeah. Cool. And uh, a little a little thing for later, as you think about questions you want to ask us at the end, um, we'd love to hear what your f majors, what your fields, uh, what your f um, fields of research interests are, uh, because there's a lot of flexibility in what kind of project that you can choose it for this program. Yeah, cool. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a bit so we can just chat. Um, yeah, we'll go from there. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, we we do have kind of like a list of questions of topics we're going through. Um, and first, we're going to talk about why why we personally chose to apply to this program. Uh, everybody has different reasons, um, but here are our stories. Annalise, you want to start? Yeah, sure. So, um, I am half Cambodian. Um, I used to live there when I was younger, so it's always been like a really, you know, important part of my personal life. Um, throughout college, it became a bigger part of my academic life, um, and I was sort of yearning for a way to do a little bit more research um, in uh, for Cambodia that is like beyond the resources that my school offered. Um, and it, yeah, I was just, I was kind of like looking for a way to travel to Cambodia, basically. And this is, this was one of the opportunities that came up. Um, but yeah, throughout, throughout my college career, a lot of my like personal and academic interests have been rooted in Cambodia. And I wanted to figure out a way to like introduce myself to the resources made available through the Center for Khmer Studies. Because, you know, you have like this wonderful library and there's a lot of connections that CKS has. Um, yeah, and I wanted to access that network a bit and hopefully begin like a longer term relationship with the center. Um, yeah, and I've also, I've just like never formally had the opportunity to study Cambodia. Like I've taken classes on Southeast Asia more generally, but I've never had the opportunity to like specifically study Cambodia in a syllabus um so yeah that, that was kind of my interest what about you Grace uh I have a very similar story um my mother is Khmer and she and her family came over as refugees in 1980 however I'm I can't I I only know a few words uh of Khmer and <laughs> not very much knowledge about the history or the culture and uh in my university I go to Texas A&M University in College Station there aren't really any uh, Asian studies and if there are Asian studies there's no Southeast Asian studies and so I kind of had to do a lot of my research and studying my interest on my own um, it was actually a bit of an accident that I found uh, CKS in the first place I was originally looking for anyone that taught um, Khmer language classes and the only ones I was able to find I was ho also hoping for a a university that taught them that I could maybe distance education so I could get credits and I found that the University of Hawaii in Manoa had a uh, classes and then through a I ended up not taking those classes but through a bunch of like rabbit hole clicking links in there I eventually found my way onto the CKS homepage and I saw the programs was like hmm this is interesting uh and I wanted to go in 2020 and 2021 but the pandemic happened and then I went and 22. Wonderful. Nice. Um, and what was like, what was your relationship like with Cambodia before the program? Well, it was mostly, um, I had never been, I didn't know anything except from little, uh, little habits that my mom and my grandmother have that I didn't realize were just cultural things and not just things that every family does um because my 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 mother did not uh have the opportunity to speak Khmer or Cambodian to me or I grew up very Americanized so mm. everything was American culture um 
I, except for my mom's food. I always eat my mom's food. <laughs> but so I was, so my relationship with Cambodia was very distant and very far off and always took the form of these papers and books that were either um, not accessible for a younger person to read because they're all like, they were all like academic papers or they were biographies. Um, and I and while I, I care very much about people's personal stories and biographies and all this academic stuff, I needed something that was more tangible and um, artistic in a way, I suppose, is, is, a, is, a, good, is a good word for it. Because I, I study animation at Texas A&M in the visualization department at the School of Performance, Visualization and Fine Arts. And so I'm an artist looking for um, the, those kinds of things, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. I also just, I wanted to note that even though Grace and I both happen to be part Cambodian, you don't need yeah. to have yeah, like, you, you a don't... personal relationship to, <laughs> to Cambodia or any sort of heritage to like be part of this program. This was just by chance. <laughs> yeah, the the we, we just happen to be very similar in our motivation, but um, there are, there are, uh, for I think, Let's see, there is somebody in my program who, the people from all over the country, there was someone from, I believe, New York, and then uh, a couple of people, and and uh, everyone has their own reasons for going, uh, their own interests. Uh, so you don't have to be half Cambodian to do this program. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and you don't have to be an artist. We just happen to also... Uh, both be in the artistic fields, but um, yeah, you know, architecture, archaeology, anthropology, literature, dance science, like any sort of thing can, uh, it's, the program's open to all majors. Yeah, and we have people from like all sorts of disciplines in each of our classes, um, and that was like probably one of the coolest parts of the program, which we'll talk about more later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just quickly, my relationship going into this program, again, I had lived there when I was younger, like elementary school age, um, and the Cambodian-American diaspora has always been like a very big interest and part of my identity. Cambodia is like the first place I remember as home, like calling home. Um, so I had a very strong relationship to the country before this program, but it was like the relationship a child has to their child, their their first home. So going into this program, this was like my first time going there as an adult without my family. Um, so even though I already had a, a relationship with the, the country, there was a lot new, a lot of new experiences, <laughs> like sort of new reintroductions to to a lot of aspects of the culture and the country um yeah and this was also like my first sort of academic connection to being in in the actual place yeah cool so when you eventually went back as an adult with like a di you got a different frame of mind a different uh context yeah. Uh, especially since you're going back to to study something that it, you chose and were particular about. So how did that, how was your classroom experience uh, during the program? Yeah. I mean, it was really cool. You know, I, I am coming from, I went to Yale University where there aren't like a ton of other Cambodians, <laughs> and, um, both in the faculty and in the student body. Um, and so I do feel like even though I was pursuing those academic interests there, um, there was no one to like really challenge my perspectives that much, um, or at least no one that came from like a, a really like strong relationship to the country as well. Um, so it was really cool to be in a classroom during this program with a bunch of people that came there to intentionally like study Cambodia um, and also people with like very different 
cultural and academic perspectives you know the the a lot of the french students they come from like a different style of education same with the the khmer students and having that all in like one classroom in a sort of like very close knit um group sem seminar style often was just like really fun to be a part of and i think it it really like opened up my my perspective a lot more into like how do i approach topics from different disciplines and from different perspectives as well yeah how about for you yeah i'm i'm gonna build off of that i basically had the same i have this the same good memories of like this the mix of minds um I really enjoyed being in that kind of environment because there's no way that one person is going to learn uh, one, you know, everything about a culture or, or even about their own individual study. For example, my whole focus was folklore and mythology. Um, and that intersects with uh, other things like history and science and even kind of like traditional medicine for example so just being around i believe someone on my during my program their research was about uh, traditional medicine and mm -hmm. being in an environment where you just were in the atmosphere of people learning different things um means that you have a you have other you potentially have other resources in your fellow students later on that you can learn from. And there's, and there's always a mix because we're not in a echo chamber um, where we're, you know, there, it, everything turns into an interdisciplinary study. Even if you're not actively purposefully working together, you are working around each other. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there was also like a lot of times with my personal like research project where you would all like I would just talk to other people in the program and be like what do you feel about this like like is is my perspective like too Americanized <laughs> like you know I was I it was nice to have people to like just make your your perspective on on different research feel a little bit more well-rounded um that was really cool and I and just a note on like how the course is structured like in terms of the syllabus um I would say that it's more breadth than depth and then like you learn a little bit about everything about history religion you know international relations cultural festivals whatever it may be all and sorts then of yeah and then, and, the, and then the depth comes from your personal project exactly exactly um yeah so you know you spend a little like a few days um kind of on each topic maybe um yeah and then of course you can choose to go deeper for your personal project as well yeah uh we also want to point out that you they do uh the american students especially get uh language classes oh the american and the french students get uh Khmer, Khmer language classes and the Khmer students get English language classes um I'll I'll ashamedly admit that I did not continue practicing even with my mother when I came back I can I can say hello so stay and a funny little anecdote when I was coming home for about six months anytime I went to an Asian market that's there's quite a few Vietnamese and uh, um, a few Korean markets in Texas um, I was very embarrassed because I accidentally, like, instinctively said Akuntaran to somebody as I was checking out, and I was like, "That's not even the right. That's not. That's not the right demographic. <laughs> it's not the right <laughs> language." I was like, "Goodbye." <laughs> yeah, that's that's funny. Um, yeah, so so the French and American students do have like like a like an intro to my language uh class that is not the focus of the overall program but it's kind of done because it is a way into the culture and also it's you know it's good to know a few basics to be able to like go around <laughs> you know get some food be able to travel 
um but yeah but I also like I really loved the the language classes too I thought they were really fun (laughs) yeah Uh, I did too yeah did you have any particular uh, um memorable memorable experiences I had a I had a couple (laughs) is there is there one or two that you want to share I mean all sorts I think it's a type of program where you know you are with the same people for six weeks so you get really familiar with each other um and at some point you know it starts to feel like oh we're just like friends now (laughs) rather than colleagues or peers um but there were a lot of cool moments I loved whenever we were riding on the bus between cities like all the the street food that (laughs) we picked up and we like passed around um trying like all sorts of different things um I remember just feeling that it was really cool to hear from super competent and informed tour guides when, oh yes I yeah, when I, we, I when will we add to that like when temples I'm... or museums or even like research organizations the people that worked there were like really really good at at answering questions and and you know super down to share um but yeah it's like CKS has a lot of like really great connections to all sorts of people in different disciplines around of the country um yeah also just like the CKS staff themselves super kind good hard-working folks loved me <laughs> every day um felt very safe and <laughs> comfortable in their hands <laughs> yeah what about you what are some memorable parts the food I don't think I've ever had a fresher chicken <laughs> um yeah. Like, like, uh, for for those for those in the U.S., you don't know what you don't know what good chicken tastes like unless it's walked <laughs> past you ten minutes ago. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry. we we uh, <laughs> leading off of that, make friends. Uh, when you go to the program, make friends with everyone because yeah. you never know. Um, you never know where that academic connection might, or you know that friendship might might uh, um continue on with your your career later and your academic career but also more particularly make friends with the local students the Khmer students because they'll know where all the good food is and (laughs) um because they know they know this this is their home uh (laughs) they know everything is uh Let's see, a particular memorable moment for me was uh, leading off of like uh, when we when my group visited uh, Angkor Wat, uh, our guide, our tour guide um, was an was a archaeologist that is in close contact with the with CKS. Um, and it was I remember we stopped for lunch and we were having a conversation and I mentioned that I my major was animation, studying animation. Uh, and he mentioned that uh, uh, an acquaintance of his or or a student, I believe, um, uh, what is it like? Asked for some advice regarding a uh, a movie that was being made, um, and it turns out it was like Raya and the Last Dragon, <laughs> and so I thought that was very cool. So now I, I so as an animation nerd, I thought it was really cool to kind of have actual proof that. Ah, uh, the the dragons in in this Disney movie are actually like have Cambodian roots. You know, not just not. You know, <laughs> I thought that was really cool. I was I was geeking out about that for for uh, days later, for days afterwards. Yeah, no, I remember being like really in awe when we first got to Wat Tham Nak and seen the library for the first time. Just because I've like never seen so much scholarship and literature specifically on Cambodia in one place. I was like, wow. This is yeah, cool. I really, <laughs> before this program, I really struggled to find anything because all everything that I could use was like all online or um, by, you know, scholars. Well, it, like stuff that wasn't digitized. Yeah. 
yeah but yeah I do think underline like just memorable experience being the friendships were huge like you have a lot of time outside of the like scheduled parts of the program to just like hang out with people and explore yeah, the yeah every um yeah, we went every- to the circus a couple times like all sorts of things um yeah and I still keep in touch with like a lot of those people I went to France after I left Cambodia and I visited <laughs> the like French students that that's awesome that they're in the program so yeah you'll definitely make a lot of good friends for sure yeah uh there was uh I believe toward the end there were some a lot of rain at one point um and so I remember uh, going in the in the tuk-tuks with like with a couple of my friends and and just it was just raining but it was still fun it was still nice I liked it and uh the the extra time you get in between the classes and and almost every day I went out to lunch uh, at a local restaurant with some other students yeah um so that was cool yeah so I mean Grace so it was it was your first time in Cambodia right yeah yeah, I, I actually ended up getting to meet some of my mother's family that I had never met before. So oh, was, wow. Yeah. That's really wonderful. But mm-hmm. what was it like, you know, the first few weeks there? Were there were there elements of culture shock that hit you? <laughs> um, I have... I, I'm... Despite not... Uh, despite not having a uh, a lot of experience international traveling um i'm fairly confident when it comes to traveling around the place um but occasionally i would always be a little confused there were not uh, not everybody speaks english and you can't expect everybody to speak english you get you know you got to go you got to try to meet people halfway when you want to communicate um and there's this one smoothie um stand lady who was very nice and i remember uh we had an entire conversation about her family and my family and some of the things we were going through all through google translate (laughs) and so if you're not (laughs) if you're not willing to 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 step out of the way and 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 make yourself uncomfortable then you're not gonna if you're not you know you get you got to be willing to make yourself uncomfortable in some situations to get the most out of this program yeah. <laughs> so uh yeah, and, and if yeah. you don't speak my like also just remember that people want to understand you so <laughs> it's okay if you sound a, like a fool like it's my like... <laughs> i think my okay my pronunciation and my accent was always so bad <laughs> i i could i always made mistakes pronouncing things uh but people and my mom's family were very uh glad that i was trying <laughs> same same no i'm a i'm a little bit of uh an embarrassment in my family because (laughs) both my parents speak (laughs) mine but I don't (laughs) but I did feel like I picked up a lot more during these yeah so that was it does it of course it helps to be just like immersed in um the language and like constantly be hearing it uh Yeah, yeah my aunt um when I was visiting my mom's family, we did a, a Facebook call, a voice call, a video call, and uh, they were discussing about how I think she understands some of the things we're saying now. I think <laughs> she, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't interact in the conversation, but I knew vaguely what they were talking about, and it was yeah. very interesting. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I think the heat. If you've never been to Southeast Asia before, the heat could be something. You need to get used to, but your body does get used to it. I think like after a week and a half, <laughs> like you still feel hot, but it doesn't bother you as much. <laughs> yeah, I brought lots of linen clothes. Um, yeah. Other students, when it came to laundry, other there were there were laundry places to take your clothes. Um, 
me personally, I did everything in the bathroom because I Same. wanted to. <laughs> um, so I I brought clothes specifically that I thought would dry quickly. Uh, li- lots of linen slacks. That was my that was my plan. <laughs> and when it came to shoes, I didn't I didn't bring nice shoes. Uh, well, I didn't bring. I had kind of thick, cloggy Keens st- sandals. If you know what that brand is, they're they're not the they're not the most attractive sandals, but they got great support, and you can slip them off reasonably fast when you go into um, when you go into temples and such. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> um. All right. Like, do you want to talk a little bit about your your research project? Just to um, get- how, about, how about you go first? Because I believe your um. Okay. I believe, yeah, your slides are first. So we're, oh, we're going to share the okay. slides for this one, okay. for this part of the presentation. And remember, you can ask questions, and we will get to them. Cool. Can you, can you see it? All right, wonderful. Okay, so um, I wanted to do a photo project uh, accompanied with a written piece. I'm primarily a filmmaker, but... Uh, I wanted to build out my sort of photo portfolio a little bit more. So this was kind of the way I wanted to go. Um, I'm super interested in like public visual culture, you know, things like signage, architecture, furniture, graffiti, any sort of public imagery that that shapes the relationship between people and the spaces they occupy. Um, so I I set off just taking a bunch of photos, not really knowing like what I would find in them, but definitely like some themes emerged from it. Here, I'll show you some more photos. So these are a couple. Um, here are a few more. Uh, yeah, so for example, mythological and religious imagery being reproduced in like urban quotidian environments was was one of the themes that that popped up uh like you know what does it tell you about the entrance of 7-eleven being guarded by lion statues you know statues that are like traditionally placed in front of sacred spaces you know what does that tell us about this space's relationship to tourism to globalization to exclusivity um so yeah that's kind of like what my project became and it actually the the proposal the project proposal that I applied with was something completely different and it just kind of evolved as I was gathering material and I do think that is kind of important to you know keep in mind that like you know making the most out of your experience and presence in the country allows for some room for like things to evolve and for you to sort of receive what whatever is being given to you um yeah so now I'm in New York City on that filmmaking grind these are my 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 film buddies um at a film festival that we went to a couple months ago um I'm currently in post-production for a short film that I wrote and directed and here on on the right here are some stills from that. Um, and it has a lot of similar themes to my research, thinking about homeland and place in relation to iconography and uh, imagery. So I definitely want to like continue this project, both literally in an extension of the photo project, um, but also, you know, taking the themes into other work I I pursue and write in the future. Yeah. Very cool. And where, where did you go to school again? Um, I went to Yale. All right. Awesome. Uh, okay. That's all. If anyone has questions actually related to our project specifically, if you're interested in the kind of stuff we do, then we'll answer those questions too. We Any excuse to, to talk about things that we love and are interested in. So keep that in mind as well. Um, okay. So this is about me my my research project uh i I've, I've mentioned previously i am interested in animation i study animation uh at texas a m and if you were there with me during uh in 2022 
I'm pretty sure 80% of the time, if you looked over to see what I was doing, I was probably taking a picture. You can see me in this little picture in the background taking pictures of uh, houseboats um, when we were on the uh, in the Tunlisap River because I love the color of the boats. Uh, and I'm desperately trying to keep my camera from getting wet here. <laughs> if you show the next, if you show the next screen, uh, these are a very tiny sampling of some of the pictures I took. My focus was Cambodian mythology and folklore. Um, I had this grand idea of coming out of these six weeks with a fully written. I, I knew this was crazy from the beginning, but I was hoping to have like a maybe a miniature anthology of Cambodian folklore. Uh, but I just there's there's so much more work I need to do. Uh, and so I took every picture I took with the idea that it either composition or architecture or um, what's the word color wise, I could use that picture in an animated film. I like a background or the scenery of an animated film or a TV show. Um, it's all supposed, everything is taken with the purpose of being a reference photo for a, a drawing essentially. Um, and so that's essentially how I attempted to frame every single thing I took a picture of. And you can kind of see that in these, this very small collection. Um, I currently have 31, over 31,000 files, <laughs> pictures um, that I took during this trip that 30,000 30, photos. I'm, I'm, I think the actual number is like 17,000 because I think there are some copies that were made. <laughs> oh, wow. uh, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. Uh and yeah, like I said every picture I I took was supposed to be either I was going to a reference photo for the color or the architecture uh or the lighting um or even just the framing of the composition. Um, I have I took pictures that have people in it too, so I could get an idea of what characters might look like in these spaces. But some of those pictures have uh, um, have other people in them, so I didn't want to I didn't want to show um, those pictures without permission. Um, okay, and for me for my actual project during the the program, what I presented at the end was essentially a podcast I made because my audience is actually Westerners because Cambodia has a rich media scene itself. And I was looking, my frustration in media comes from the lack of diversity and representation in Western animation specifically. So I was trying to bring more Southeast Asian and specifically Cambodian mythology and folklore into making more content, basically. Uh, so my project was a podcast or an attempt at a podcast. I only made one episode because I found that I think it's not the right, it wasn't the right medium for me to just talk. Mm -hmm. uh, however, everything that I did leads into my current project. If you want to do the next slide. Uh, so I actually started this research way back in 2019, and then I got to do this trip to Cambodia and, and collect more meat, more folklore and 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 uh, uh, material, and I'm bringing it into my graduation, um, because for my degree we're required to do a capstone project, which is a research paper paired with some sort of project what some sort of project whether it be a, a technical tool and in my case I plan to do a um an animated short it's not going to be fully animated because I don't have the time for that it's going to be like storyboarded and then put to timing and, and sound um an animatic um and this is a little bit of concept art that I drew for my project and the idea is that it's a story uh, that is supposed to mix some history with folklore, and uh, and there's a little bit of therapy in it, <laughs> personal therapy for myself, um, written into the story. And I think some of the themes will be mothers and daughters. Uh, but if you 
if you'll give me just a second, I'll just read this little blurb that I wrote. Um, and everything about the story would probably be changed as I work on it more. Uh, the current title, which may change, is Ghosts and Dragons, or I'm gonna I'm gonna pronounce this bat poorly. Kmao Ning Nick. Ning Nick? I I tried. I tried. I'm sorry. Uh Nakri who died as a teenager in 1945 without proper funeral rites, and Chantre Pautavi. Pau, I, I really need to practice my pronunciation. Uh, tre, Treya, for short, <laughs> uh, is a lonely naga guarding a forgotten temple. They accidentally kidnap a little girl named Tari, who was separated from her mother and siblings during the tumultuous final days of the Khmer Rouge. Uh, these two, who are spirits basically the two spirits decide to bring this human girl to a rumored refugee camp at the thai cambodian border where she should be safe and might find her family and it's a journey story along the way they have to keep tari safe from demons both spirit and humans uh and the the project is supposed to be a tiny one one to three minute animatic uh, that's like seen from this story, which will also be a, a book that I'm in the middle of writing right now. Um, okay, so that is my future plans related to <laughs> my project. Uh, when I was over in Cambodia, I collect, I brought back like 20 books of like children's. Uh, you can't really, oh man, you can't see it. There we go. I, <laughs> I brought like, I brought like a bunch of children's books of, about like different folklore and such. <laughs> So that's what I did. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So I think we're going to run through quickly um, some application tips for people mm -hmm. that are looking to apply. Again, application open, go apply. Um, but yeah, so you'll need a personal statement, a sort of topic of interest, uh, two reference letters or recommendation letters, um, and then a CV along with a few other things. Uh, yeah, so these are just some things that I think were helpful when applying um, to keep in mind. It's good to go in with like a strong, specific research proposal. Um, and again, it can change. There's flexibility to change, but I think you want to show that, you know, you have a, a strong plan going forward and also have a specific interest. Um, and also think about like why it's important that you be in Cambodia for the research um, and not just like things you can access online or via Google Scholar or whatever it is, um, or your school's library. Like why do you have to be in Cambodia? Um, also choose choose references that are, that, that like know you well <laughs> and that can speak to uh, your relationship to the research or your interest or your your way of like working as a student. Um, and make sure to like ask ask those people well in advance because it takes them a while and you don't want to rush them. Um, and you also just want to make sure everything gets in on time. <laughs> Yeah. Don't don't do what I did. I I beg forgiveness from my professors that I did this too, but I literally I was a I was a terrible student who asked my professors very last minute, like within a few days. And it's not reasonable to ask your professors to write letters of recommendation for you within a few days of the application deadline. Don't do that. I was lucky that they were nice. But I did get a little bit of a talking to uh, one one professor saying something along the lines of I didn't want to feel I, I don't want to be uh, pulling an all nighter. I don't want to feel like I'm in grad school again. <laughs> so don't don't ask in advance. Learn learn from from my mistakes. Don't make the same mistake yourself. <laughs> For sure. Um, also, in your personal statement, it might be good to you know, mention a little bit about how this program might, you know, serve you in, in your future aspirations. This, you know, the center was created to empower scholars and 
you know, people who want to continue having a relationship with the country and produce work out of the country. Um, and so, yeah, so thinking a little bit about how this specific program might fit in to whatever plans you have in the future um, would be good. Uh, also, like, tailoring your CV and its structure and the things that you prioritize, um, tailoring it to whatever your research aspirations are. Um, so, like, for example, for me, I put, you know, classes on Southeast Asia that I've taken, papers that I've written, or projects, listing projects that are, that seem, you know, relevant. So yeah, just figuring out how to structure it so that you, you put the most relevant things um, wherever, wherever it's highlighted. Cool. Um, also, thinking ahead about the methodology of your research, whether you want to do interviews or access literature um, or take photos or like whatever it is, um, you know, thinking about thinking ahead and communicating how you're going to approach the research. Um, also, remember that if you don't speak Khmer, you'll make Khmer speaking friends um, that can help you with interviews and stuff. And that is something that you can you can mention as part of your methodology. Yep, I I, I really think, I, I think uh, our our lovely um, moderator, Sere, for, for her help with my project. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and yeah, there's, when it comes to the methodology, um, and uh, actually, you know what? Everything that Annalise said makes sense. Listen, listen to all of that. Think about it early on. And if you have to make a decision on something and chase down that idea and it, and therefore, if you realize that it's, that something doesn't work, then you learn early on and you can change your idea. Yeah. You can change, you can make a new decision. Yeah. Things are pretty flexible within the first couple weeks of the program to, to sort of, uh, yeah, change up your topic or your methods or your your form even. Um, mm -hmm. Speaking of which, the the actual like output is flexible. You can do a research paper, which a lot of people choose to do. Um, or you can yeah, use... if you're if you're planning on going to grad school, especially and like cont and and continuing that sort of outputting research, then it's good practice for writing a paper. You know, yeah, and it and it looks nice. I think having a having a paper on your CV when you apply to grad school looks pretty good too. So, yeah, for sure. Um. So yeah, just you know, think about what excites you most, and um, you know, what makes sense to have with whatever aspirations you have going forward. Um. And just the last point is that you can build off of previous research you've done. Um, yeah, yeah. Some people in my class did like research on a different country in Southeast Asia, and they kind of evolved that research to do more of like a comparative analysis. Um, you know, there's all sorts of like different approaches, and you can yeah, you can build on previous work. Some people had like already 10 pages of an essay and they turned it into like a 30 page essay um yeah so, my my okay. research like i said started in 2019 um i wrote a short story about a ghost who kidnaps a little boy <laughs> from from a Khmer Rouge camp and so i kind of continued that whole idea of, of gathering folklore and, and and things uh and you can and i already mentioned you can see how my work has progressed um and well well actually i have a question for you annalise do you have any regrets about your medium like do you wish you had done something else for uh for what you ended up presenting during the program i don't think so i really i really wanted to do a photo project i would have been open to doing a film project but in my head it just the the equipment and the process would be too intensive that I would just get overwhelmed. 
um, with this like short period of a time, but people have done it. So mm -hmm. <laughs> there's no stopping you, but I was pretty satisfied with, with my choice of media. Yeah, I, I think I got a little tripped up by a bit of self-doubt because in hindsight, I should have done something visual instead of attempting a, to record myself doing a podcast where the podcast was literally just me retelling the Preton Ning Nick story. Uh, I should have jumped on the opportunity for me to make an illustration uh, looking back on it. No way I could have done like a little animation in six weeks, but I could have done some concept art for my project. Um, but I, at the time, was feeling like, oh, I'm not good enough. Uh, I'm not good enough of an artist. I, you know, that those kind of self-doubt things that kind of kind of get in your way. Uh, I'm very happy with what I ended up doing. But looking back on it, I probably would have done like an illustration. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but I mean, you know, you, you know, it sounds like you're going to do a lot more illustration. <laughs> yeah. I think it's good that you like took a lot of photos and and. You know, you, you, were thinking, <laughs> you were thinking ahead, even if your like initial idea for the packaging was different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. Well, it looks like we have about seven minutes left before uh, we have to end this. Um, what is this called? A talk informational. Uh, so if anyone has any questions, please send it into the Q&A. Uh-oh. <laughs> Ad blocks. <laughs> Uh, there is one question that I see here where it's, uh, how, does this program qualify for academic credits that go toward my college degree? Uh, well, unfortunately, well, okay. I don't think we can speak for um, your university like, and or for CKS. However, I will say, though, if I had given more thought into it, I would have worked something out with my advisor to arrange credits in some way um because my i i cannot this is not academic advice but i believe that if i had done a little if i had looked and asked the right questions to the right people i believe there could have been opportunities for me to make this count as academic credit um most likely for my school i would have maybe done some paperwork with my academic advisor got permission from my dean and maybe have gotten uh one of my professors to be a at-home contact that I would like send a progress report to and then that maybe would have counted as a there there is such a thing in my school for about research credits that could have been taken over this that would have counted towards the summer and maybe the contemporary Cambodian history course that we were being taught in CKS might we might have been able to make it work um so yeah, I, I think it's I did not do something. School. Yeah, yeah, I think it might be dependent on your school and whether you can convince them. <laughs> yeah, if <laughs> you if you can work, I recommend that if you want those credits, you work something out. Me, I didn't chase it down hard enough because I the value of going to Cambodia yeah. and getting my research and collect and photo collection everything out was so important and outweighed the for for me personally it outweighed the fact that I wasn't getting academic credits yeah but if I had thought about it more I would have chased it down <laughs> yeah okay do we have yeah. any other questions um what is your implication for a six weeks project in Cambodia I'm not sure I completely understand the question uh implication do you do you mean like how how spending six weeks in Cambodia might carry on in our career. Uh, you can you can also you can chat put in the chat too if you have a uh the question there. And if anyone has any questions about our not just about the program but also about our projects too then that would be cool we love talking about our stuff uh we want to make sure that but like primarily the program questions because we want to make sure that we answer any questions people might have what is your implication oh it, do you mean like 
um, recommendation for projects, like project ideas people could do for in that six weeks. Um, because uh, there was quite a variety of projects that I saw. Uh, for example, someone in my uh, in my group was very focused on uh, my um, what is the term traditional ballet. Um, so there's a whole bunch of subject oh, implications of your research. Oh, cu like cultural implications. Uh, for me, I the cultural implication is that I am. I, I am making a commentary on the lack of diversity in Western media, specifically in animation, because all we have at the moment in, in, in mainstream media is Raya and The Last Dragon. And while I love the movie, it had strengths and weaknesses. And my answer to that is we need more content. And mm -hmm. if we want more content, we have to make it. So my research is like a commentary on we can do more. We can we uh so i hope i hope that my research has implications in the animation industry and that we will see more uh kamai mythology on in disney or or other you know companies will take on those kind of stories so i i hope there are like implications that in the in the world uh what about you annalise <laughs> yeah i think i think for mine um so a lot of my ideas came from the perspective of like being a tourist. <laughs> um, that was primarily how I was walking through uh, through Siem Reap um, as I was doing my research. So a, a lot of the, the, I just didn't feel like I had the language skills to, to articulate um local perspectives at this stage <laughs> um but yeah so a lot of a lot of my research was thinking about how urban Siem Reap is shaped for tourists and how tourists shape the space as well the way you know hotels pop up as exclusive spaces and sort of create this uh segregation um yeah, so like lots of different things, but yeah, I'm I'm getting I'm seeing a note to wrap up. So I'm just gonna quickly uh put put this back on. Let's see. There we go. Hopefully it doesn't get blocked. Yeah. Um All right. we... both of us are happy to answer many more questions if you want to reach out to us personally. Um we have our email addresses down below and also our like social media handles um yeah but totally down to to continue answering more questions um there uh yeah yeah if my i i included a link to my um instagram account and my blog uh that doesn't have it my my blog doesn't have anything quite on it right now but if you are interested in following my progress with my animation um project you are welcome to follow me uh, or ask me questions or if you want to help with my research you want to help me with the project then please reach out um and thank you all very much for coming uh we had a lot of fun talking about this oh wait oh one more question i think it's seven o'clock technically we need to end um if you're a Cambodian American student who's already somewhat proficient in Khmer, would you still be in the like, Khmer language classes while at the program? Yes, um, both for the camarader camaraderie reasons and because the language pro you can help other people who might need help. And the language program is not a very in depth; it just gives you a very you know a very basic working so knowledge of um, how to say thank you, where's the bathroom, hello, goodbye. Um, so yeah. You, you might be able to get out of it if you really don't want to be in it, but it is fun. It's like a good time. It's I recommend of... you I recommend you hang around to help out other people and also to make friends because it's another interaction yeah. with other students. Yeah. Uh, all right. We do have to wrap up. Uh, thank you, everyone, so much for coming. Uh, I'll, I will reiterate that if we did not get to your question or if you have more questions, please reach out to us. 
uh, there's links in the chat and on this screen here, um, or you can message CKS for how to contact us. Uh, yeah. All right, we are, we're done. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.